Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing the Kaideng K80, otherwise known as the Pantonma, or Pantonma, I'm not exactly sure how to, how to pronounce that, it doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. You probably heard about this toy grade quadcopter because it's the very first quadcopter, at least the very first that I'm aware of, that has an obstacle avoidance module on the bottom of it. So that's kind of what all the hype was about this, uh, this quadcopter. Um, they do sell a couple of different models. Um, a base model doesn't come with it, and then there's different cameras, and we'll go over all that. But uh, this one that I got does come with the obstacle avoidance module. Now it is there's four infrared um, spots here where it emits the infrared light, and that's what it uses to detect um, objects. And uh, it only works in the lowest or beginner's rate. So in that rate, it's going to be emitting out. It blinks all the time, but it only works in that lowest rate. And that lowest rate, the, the quadcopter has very little pitch, maybe 10 degrees. So it is not going to be a good flyer outdoors in any wind at all it, to try to use that obstacle avoidance. Um, it's something you would, would want to use indoors for sure. Um, so, you know, it's not very realistic, to be, in my opinion, for um, using outdoors. It does not work... Um, on dark like black surfaces or against a mirror in a house so if really like a gymnasium or something would be a perfect place to test it it also doesn't like sunlight because the bright sunlight will overwhelm that sensor the infrared and it can't pick it up coming back so there's a lot of um, negatives to that obstacle avoidance module but for a toy grade you can't expect something real high end and it, it does work in my flight review you'll see in the back of my house I've got beige Final siding and it it cruises up and then it backs that way you know and it, and it kind of does its own thing so when you first are flying it and all of a sudden it's you don't know why it's backing away like especially in your house in a small area and I'm trying to control it and it kind of doesn't let you control it when it's starting to move back so it's easy to end up crashing once you do take control so now my these props have quite a bit of scuffs on them but they're really um, flexible props and I've not had any damage to them as hard as I've crashed it and that's only been because of the obstacle points I've been trying to test. Um, flying it in the medium or high rates, uh, you won't have any problem. Uh, it does not have, a, it's, a, it's a really good flyer and the obstacle avoidance is turned off so I've not crashed it flying in those rates. Um, it does have altitude hold so it, the barometer works really well. It holds altitude really, really nicely. It's easy to land. So, I mean, there's a lot of positives about this quadcopter. Just the obstacle avoidance module is not a, a very, um, I guess, a, a very realistic. You shouldn't have high expectations, I guess you could say. It does work, but don't expect to go out and fly around and it's going to just avoid everything and, and not run into, you know, it won't work against a tree or anything like that either. It needs to be a solid object, white or very light in color. Um, you can take it off though, so the, the module will come off. You just slide it back and it pops off, and um, you know, so you don't have to keep it on. Uh, same thing with the, uh, you know, the battery slides out here. And I'll go over that in a minute. But the, the camera too, uh, the camera pops out, slides back in, and you can replace it. They sell several different cameras for this. So a, this is the two megapixel Wi-Fi version. Um, the camera also tilts. I'm, you can hear it moving the little servo or the motor if I get it closer. Um, it does tilt, so when you push down on the controls, the camera goes all the way down, and then it just it'll go all the way down when you push down. Then it comes when you push back up on the controller, it goes to like a 45 degree angle, and then one more time it goes all the way up. Of course, for FPV flying, you're going to want it all the way up. But you can take these off. Um, I don't know about taking a camera off. Um, you can do it, but it would have, you have a big gap in the front. You'd want to put a different camera in there. Um, but if you take these off, it says it'll do 3D flips. Um, it says it won't with both of them attached. I, that'd be odd with the camera out. So I don't, I don't really see the purpose of that. I guess you know the base model doesn't have a camera. This is just one molded in a piece here with no camera, and that one uh, will, will do the 3D flips. Um, let's see here. It's got um, it's LED, LEDs on it. It has. Um, blue LEDs in the front and red in the back and these long strips here in the arms. They're decently bright but in the daytime you can't see them too well especially with the shape of this and in the low rate you know unless you're up high above you you're not going to see those LEDs and um, 
they do flash when you get to the low voltage cut off the LVC. I'm getting about 7 minutes 15 uh, seconds total flight time. So 6 minutes 45 seconds with a 30 second uh, LVC and then you get about 7 minutes 15 seconds of flight time. Um, looking over some of the other stuff. I said the camera is a Wi-Fi and that works to an app. So you record your video to the uh, Pantanma uh, FPV app on the phone. We'll go over here in a moment. So it does not have an SD card slot. Some of the other camera models, there's a, there's a, uh, a 0.3 megapixel, a really low resolution one. There's a, this is a 2, there's a 5 megapixel, um, which would be a, a much higher quality. I, that one I think takes an SD card. Then there's a, a 5.8 gigahertz um, one, which transmits back to the app. And uh, it's not to an app, but to a, uh, a analog FPV, like goggles or something. It doesn't go to an app, excuse me, I was I'm thinking of the Wi-Fi here. But uh, that one there, I don't know if that takes an SD card or not. Um, it probably doesn't. It doesn't mention it on the box. Let's see here. Like I said, there's a lot of modules type stuff about this. Um, the battery goes in the back here. And um, it is a proprietary battery, so that's a bit of a downer. It's one of the most unusual batteries I've seen. It doesn't say any markings on here at the size, but the instruction manual says it's a 650 milliamp. I'm sure this is a 1S LiPo, um, just judging by the size. Um, it has an unusual charger. Um, it's a USB cable here with a little bitty uh, plug, and that plug goes into the side of the battery here. And you plug it in here, and you'll see this kind of lights up. And when you plug it into USB, the light goes out. So whenever the light comes back on, then it means it's fully charged. And it takes about an hour to charge it, so the charge time is not too bad to get it charged up. It charges up pretty quick. Now the controller, it also has a built-in rechargeable battery. It's an 80 milliamp LiPo inside of here. And it is not removable. I guess if you turn all the screws, you can get in there and probably replace it, but it's not easily removable. And it uses this, that same charging cable, and that charging uh, cable plugs in here to the bottom. And plug it in the wall. I charge it the first time. And it didn't take too long, but I didn't get an exact time, and it, you know you shouldn't have to charge this very often, so I didn't like say get an exact time on it, but uh, it is kind of neat to save your batteries there, and it should last for quite a while, uh, but you know, having a, a light bulb built into it. Uh, let's see here. I guess let's go ahead and go over the accessories, and then we'll go over the controller. It does come with a set of full set of prop guards. I did not put those on. Probably should have with the obstacle avoidance. I didn't realize it was going to be such a problem in the house because of the cramped area when it wants to move back. So I could have saved myself some crashes there putting the, these on. So you would, but you would, are gonna expect a shorter flight time uh, with the prop guards, the added weight of the prop guards. It comes with a full set of extra props, which you may need because uh, you will crash into stuff if you're trying to use the obstacle avoidance. Some spare screws to attach the props and a uh, Phillips screwdriver. So that's the extra stuff that it comes with. Let's go ahead and go over the controller. Like I said, this is a pretty neat controller. I like this controller. It's got the altitude hold, so the self-centering stick here. Your phone or a very small tablet can fit into here for your FPV flying running the app. Uh, let's see here. On the top, it's got your, um, it says your, your auto takeoff and landing, but it doesn't auto takeoff. When you push it, the props just spin up and it just sits there. Then so you just Press up on a throttle stick and it takes off. It's not a big deal, but usually they give you uh, auto takeoff on these. But it does auto land when you press that. You just tap it and it comes down and lands and does a pretty good job. It's got the three rates. You go to intermediate and an expert rate. Um, and those higher rates, the obstacle avoidance stops working. And um, you, so if you're using it and you want to exit out of the obstacle once you're going to see it's going to crash. You just tap this once to get to the next rate. And then you take off your control and it's going to stop using the IR sensors. The yaw is the, you know, as decent as you get up to the higher rates, so it is proportional to the, uh, to, the, the, to the rates. So the yaw increases significantly when you get to the middle or intermediate rate and even more so an expert, but it's really, really slow in that, uh, be in that beginners or low rate. So like I said, there's very little pitch in the lowest rate, but the pitch gets, you know, it's a lot more sportier, sportier in the expert rate, but it's not a, as fast quad copter by any means. But it's not too bad in the highest rates. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the controller itself here, I think, uh, let's see, we've got the um, 
one key return here, the little house button. I did not use that. I'm not a fan of one key return on these. And there's a, a uh, button for filming and uh, taking pictures. I think it's a uh, short press for uh, pictures and a long press for video. But that's not functional on this one because this is a Wi-Fi version. So it records the app. So you got to start recording with the app. So this does not tell the app to start recording. So this button is not functional on this camera. But you can swap the cameras out and then you could get it to work with one of the other uh, cameras, one that has a micro SD card built in, that's what this would be for. You got your trim buttons here for the uh, yaw, uh, trim for the roll and the pitch here. Let me turn it around, I'm not holding it. This was such a wide controller. Again, this is the trims for the uh, yaw, uh, roll, and the pitch. This little button here in the middle, this focuses in, is the uh, to turn the LEDs on and off. So. You can turn those off, especially during the day. They're not going to be too useful to you, except for your low voltage cutoff. And if you took that off and you took off the module on the bottom, you know, you probably could get yourself maybe, you know, an, an extra minute maybe of flight time. I don't know. I didn't test it. Um, you know, so that's something to consider. And, I, and flying without the prop guards helps too, obviously. This uh, bottom button here is entering the headless mode, which I, I don't use. But if you use headless mode, you press that. Um, probably a long press I'm not sure but it's a special button just for the headless mode over on the left here is your power button it's pretty small here and that powers it up the buttons down next two down is your uh, camera up and your camera down so you know you press it down it goes all the way straight down the camera does so you press it and that camera goes all the way down so you can fly it up and do an overhead shot and then you tap that button again uh, if you tap the uh, tap it again, you know, it's as far as it'll go down. But if you tap the up one, it goes to 45. And you tap it again, and it goes all the way level. But you want it all the way up for FPV flying. This bottom button would be for doing 360 flips, which, like I said, doesn't function on this one. It would be more on the uh, base model, or if you took off the modules all off this quadcopter, then it says it will do flips. Uh, let's see. To calibrate, it doesn't say how to calibrate the gyros. It says to calibrate headless mode. You do the stick down and to the left until the lights quit flashing. Um, I, I guess maybe that calibrates the headless mode and the gyros. I, that's the best thing I can guess because I've tried all different other combinations I can't get it to, to flash. So usually those are separate but that's the only calibration instruction manual mentions is down and to the left. All right here I think let's see let's go ahead I guess we'll go ahead and go over the app. Um, the app is called the Pantama FPV app right there next to my Slick Deals app, and that one there, you can still open it up even without the uh, the Wi-Fi connect, and it's it's a nice looking app. Uh, you click my drone to get into the controls, and then it even has a help section. And multi by multimedia is just to access your photo gallery for your pictures and videos. Uh, we can click into it here without it connected, and we can go over some of the uh, the controls. You got your uh, photo your video i believe this is it doesn't go over the app and the instruction i think that's for using um your uh, accelerometer and a phone to use it for controls which a lot of these do this one turns off the the on-screen controls which you want off when you're using the controller this is for your rates here in the middle uh this one's your uh, one key return i believe headless mode turn off the leds there's even a 3d view which it doesn't work with it without it connected. If you want to, uh, I guess, put these into a uh, 3D like VR goggles or something. I don't know. I, I don't mess with the 3D stuff on this too much, but it does do the split screen for the 3D. Uh, down the bottom here is a button for taking off. Tilt your camera up and down, and uh, your gallery it shows you your Wi-Fi signal too, which is pretty cool. That's helpful. These down here don't work unless you're using the uh, the on-screen controls. They won't, you can't use them when you're, um, when they're off. All right, I think it may be when you have the uh, transmitter bound to it. You have to have the transmitter not on at all and just using the app. So, uh, you know, pretty neat. Um, we could power it up here real quick and see if we can connect it. See if we can, sh we can show it to you there. You got to hold this power button down the top. Um, well, I got to put the battery in first. That'd help. It has a pretty neat little power button here, and a little tab you push in, you gotta hold it. And, you hear it, and it puts the camera down at like 45 degrees when it starts out. 
So I'm going to push it up. It won't hurt it, even though it's powered on. And uh, you might see the, the blinking. Now you can see the blinking IR lights on the obstacle avoidance module. Flashing lights there. At this point, now you just go into your phone's uh, Wi-Fi settings. And it'll come up here, the KD underscore 01DE. Hopefully that shows up. Just press it. Press connect. And we're connected. And now we're just going to go over to the app. And I need to back back out of the app here. And if I start it up again, it should bring up the feed. There we go. I take off the, the controls. And now we can see there's a bit of lag to it, which you expect with FPV. And the farther away, it seemed like the lag got worse. So in my flight review, I was over in a neighbor's yard. And I got kind of quiet because I was trying to regain a, a orientation. Because the lag on the, uh, the FPV was making it a little bit difficult to... Uh, see which way I was facing uh, at the moment because I'd correct and then it'd be a little behind here so just something to keep in mind but that's pretty typical with these FPV um, Wi-Fi FPV flyers so go ahead and turn it off all right uh, I think that covers quite a bit of everything on it there's a lot to cover with this thing I don't want to make this review too long but it comes packaged nicely it's an attractive looking, uh, but a little bit different quadcopter. The controller's great. I like the built-in battery and the transmitter. That's a bonus. I like that the camera, uh, is, you, know, you can adjust the angle of the camera from the controller remotely. That's cool. Um, the video from this particular one is very poor quality. Here, according to the app, it says it's 720p, but it's, it's really bad. I, I've just... I was really um, disappointed in the camera quality, but I think if you swap this module out to another camera, the 5 megapixel will probably, what, recording an SD card, would be much, much better video. So I would recommend this quadcopter, but I wouldn't recommend buying it with the obstacle avoidance module unless you really want to see how it works and you got the extra money to spend because it's a lot cheaper. Like the base model on this probably runs around 45 bucks or so um, if you get it with nothing. And you get one with just a camera um, and not the obstacle avoidance, it's probably going to run, I don't know, I'm guessing here, 70 or something. It's going to be a lot less than with the obstacle avoidance module, this can run over $100. I don't know if it's worth it unless you want to try it out. So I can't necessarily recommend it with the obstacle avoidance module. I'm just going to look over my instructions here one more time. I mean, it is a very lightweight. Um, I didn't get an exact weight. Uh, I did. I mean, I did weigh it. I don't remember the weight. I didn't write it down. But it is well under 250 grams. So there's no FAA registration required in the U.S. Um, I think so. I think that's everything. So, yeah, that covers it all. So, let's go ahead and we'll move along to the uh, flight review. Back now with the review of the K80, uh, the Kaideng K80 Pant. Tanma, I think it's pronounced. It does not roll off the tongue very uh, easily, the name. <laughs> I think that's how I'm pronounced. Anyway, I would just call it the K80. Now, this one has the uh, obstacle avoidance module here on the bottom that uses infrared and it uses that to uh, detect objects. It only works in beginners or low rate. I think that's because the pitch. If you were to pitch a whole bunch after trying to do it, it would block it and it wouldn't work well. So, the unfortunate thing is it has almost no pitch I mean maybe 10 degrees so it is not something you're gonna be able to use outdoors when there's any wind at all there's a little bit of breeze today I'm gonna to try it here against the back of my house it does work okay but it's more designed for use indoors in a large area uh, where you don't have to worry about the breeze it also is um, needs to be used against a bright surface um, you know see this light um, beige siding or white vinyl fence it won't work against black because that won't uh, reflect back the uh, infrared uh, light, and it does not work on you know against a mirror or something, obviously, because that's going to not uh, do it either. Um, it also has a uh, the camera does move up and down here. Let's see if I can uh, do it with the controller and show you uh, before we start filming. There's a lot of things to cover here. It starts out with it aiming down. You can see it moving all the way up, and it goes down. It has three positions one you see one it seems like it goes all the way down there but then it comes back up and in three increments 
or two increments, I should say. So there's three positions, but it seems like when you go down, it wants to go all the way. I think it wanted to go all the way down there. So I'm going to go ahead and take it up and low rate. It has altitude holds, and altitude hold works very well. So that is one of the big, uh, uh, that's one of the good things that I really like about it. In fact, I like pretty much everything about it except for the obstacle avoidance. It's more of a, uh, a novelty for a beginner to might to use, use inside. So I'd probably recommend this to... Uh, to buy this without the obstacle avoidance because it is a really good quadcopter otherwise the control the controller is really nice hold your smartphone really well so um let's go ahead. i'm going to back up here and get my make sure i get my live feed there okay now i got my live feed turn off the uh, on-screen display you could use your smartphone to fly it so i'm going to take it up over here and let's, uh, try it out in um, the obstacle avoidance and then we'll record, record some video and a uh, tilt the camera up and down and make sure I get everything done because it is uh, it's a lot to cover here so I'll stop rambling and let's go ahead and get it up in the air and it does not auto take off it just starts to process but it does auto land with this button here on the top hope I hold it up high enough to see um, so we will see um, we'll go ahead and take it up I don't know why it doesn't take off it's odd most of them do so I start up the process and take it up I'm just going to kind of let it Float over here, it's slowly, and we'll see if it works. Now, if we get it, I want to get it down because if you, the sunlight will, uh, let's see if it detects it. Yep, and it backed up. I did not do anything there. I got my hands off the controller, and it's backing up. So, it, like I said, it does work, but you just need the right conditions for it to work. I have scuffed up the props because when you get something that doesn't work, it, it hits the propellers pretty hard, but they have yet to break. They're just scuffed up. So when it works, it's pretty neat. It is, I think it's pretty cool. It's just not very uh, realistic. So if I had it out here in the sun, and I tried to maybe use my hand or something, it's probably not going to do anything. Um, but you get it here in the shade where the sensors are not being disrupted by the sunlight and it works. Now you take it over here where I've got my, oh, and see now, now it's hitting the siding. So I'm going to try to, now you just, if you want to bump it out of obstacle avoidance, you just take your rate step. It only works, like I said, in beginner's rate. So if I took it over here where I got my siding, it's probably not going to uh, work very well because the sun is coming down through here. But I think it'll, let's take it right up here and see if it works against this white siding here down low. No. It could just be something, it could be that that uh, vinyl siding is maybe even too reflective, even though it says white. But it works really well against this beige siding. Now I'm going to take it over here and land it. Just tap it once and it lands really well. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start filming now so I know how to uh, I can get this synced up with the um, the flight. So. All right, should be recording. Now it just records from the Wi-Fi to the smartphone. So you fly FPV, and um, you uh, is not this particular one doesn't have an SD card. They have several different cameras you can swap in and out. It's all modular, so that is kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and take it up. And there's the yaw on medium or intermediate rate, and there is uh, expert. I'll take it all the way down. There's look at <laughs> beginners, intermediate, expert. I'm going to uh, tilt the camera down now, and uh, hopefully we can I can show you. you. Could use this if you want to take it up and uh, get some aerial views down. There's the uh, all the way down. Like I said, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it goes all the way down on you. It has a little bit of, there's not much breeze, but it has a little bit of trouble fighting it. Alright. I want to, 
I got a little quiet there because I, I uh, lost orientation a little bit. I was using the FPV, but uh, it got a little laggy out there. The FPV is not it's not too laggy up close, but it got in there in the neighbor's yard. It started to get a little laggy, and I was having a little trouble. So I got kind of quiet. I don't want to lose it there. Let's make sure. Let's see. We are in the highest rate now. Okay, I'm going to bring it back up one notch there, and that's the, like a 45 degree angle on the camera. But really, those are not going to be good for FPV flying. You want it all the way up like that. That's what you want to use if you're going to FPV fly. The other angles are just going to be more for, uh, really for taking like a picture. It has a photo here on the, you can tap to take a photo. And that was that would be the best use for that. You can take it up high and then take a picture of your house, your property, yourself. Take a selfie, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> but the, the, the tilting camera is kind of cool. I think it's a, that's kind of a nice feature. You don't see that too much on these toy grade models. Altitude hold works good. It comes down nicely. You pull it down and it comes down nice steady rate. Now you cannot do 3D flips with the uh, obstacle avoidance module attached and I think it said and with the uh, uh, camera attached. Now both of those are detachable. They're modular. You can pull them off um, and then you could but I've not messed with that. Um, I probably would take the obstacle avoidance module off. That's going to give you a little more flight time because of course and you're not going to be powering it too. Um, the camera, I don't know, I mean, it, you'd have an you'd have an open hole there in the front, so I don't know what that would do to the aerodynamics if you flip with no camera stuck in there. It's, the air is going to kind of fly into the uh, nose, of, into uh, into the quadcopter. That might uh, mess it up some. So, especially with the barometer in there, so I don't, I would not advise flying it without the camera. But you can swap them. They sell a. Uh, uh, a camera that takes an SD card, which of course will give you better quality video than recording here to the camera, uh, to your to your smartphone, I should say. And they sell a 5.8 gigahertz one, which you could use with FPV goggles, and that one's going to give you much better range and uh, uh, you know nearly zero lag. Well, you have, of course, you have some lag. Like I said, it's not too bad. Um, it's not too bad with the. Uh, up close, but you get a little ways away, and, and the lag's pretty bad. But that's you know that's the way all FPV uh, Wi-Fi flyers are. Okay, let's go ahead and land it here. All right. Well, I think that pretty much covers all we need to go over here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. Right, as I said, it's a neat looking quadcopter. I was getting them, um, I did not, I don't know how long that flight time was, um, but I was getting around seven minutes to seven minutes and 15 seconds flight time. Uh, about 30 seconds of that is a low voltage, or it'll start to land itself, and it started to kind of do it right there. And I went ahead and told it to go ahead and land all the way by tapping the button, but uh. I don't know if that was seven minutes or not. It probably was. It kind of time flies and you're having fun. But um, if not, I had charged the battery quickly after I uh, did my last flight. So sometimes that you know, if you charge it up and the battery's still warm, it might not have gotten as good a charge. So overall, a pretty neat quadcopter. I just wouldn't recommend buying the more expensive one with the obstacle avoidance because I just don't think that's beneficial unless you got a young kid that. Uh, you're just starting out in the hobby and you got open area you can take it indoors and you can you know make sure it doesn't crash into the walls it should it works pretty good you know inside with no wind and bright walls but uh overall it's not really it's more of a novelty with these infrared it's just not something i i would highly recommend but i would maybe look at a, a better camera that takes the sd card so and you can, uh, it has LEDs here on the front and back, and you can turn them on and off in the control. And that's stuff that I all, I covered all in the table review. Just kind of like to go over a few things, because some people like to skip ahead to the flight review. So, all right, well, I think that wraps it up. We got the flight in, and overall pretty neat quadcopter. So I appreciate you tuning in, and stay tuned for more videos.